Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. So this is the video on building a equipment rack for your hi-fi. Um, so what I've done is I've pushed this job on quite a long way already because I find with a lot of these videos they, they take so long and people get bored of them. So this is very self-explanatory how to produce this uh, rack. So I've over here I've built the bottom part of it. Okay, so it's very simple in effect this is one of the isolation tables that's already been polished it's just got to be wire walled and waxed to give it a satin look to it so we'll put that on there so this is it so we've got some um 24 mil birch ply okay and we've got these these are are literally um oak balustrades from a staircase you can buy them in uh, b and q uh, Wixes, anywhere that or builders merchant that does, you can get them online as well. There'll be loads of places. Uh, these, these are around about 40 mil, 40 mil um, thick. So, and then uh, what I've done is I've I've cut them to the desired length which I need for my equipment to go into. So, as you can see, see this is like a, a modular design. So that means that you can add more to it as you go along if you want to, or you can reduce it. So if you look there, see that one, it pops off. And uh, it just sits on top of this one. And what I'm going to be doing now is putting together another one, just to show you how to put that together. And that's going to be the final piece of the jigsaw on the top. And then underneath, I'm gonna, we're going to be putting some casters on it, really heavy duty casters. I could put spikes on the underneath, but I need to be able to get in and out of the system now and again to try out different cabling. And as soon as you've got spikes on the floor, it's going to be very difficult. Bearing in mind, you're going to have a lot of weight on this. And then I'm going to have to start dismantling things. I don't really want to do that. So casters are going on the bottom. But on each shelf here, we're going to have an isolation table as well. So it's almost like double isolation, which is going to be really, really classy. So that's why, why, why I've built these, uh, why I've cut these isolation tables. And uh, yeah, so what we're going to do now is get into the video and start showing you how to assemble the other shelf. Right, so first of all, um, these are our, our pieces of oak. Now I've already put the thread in there for the, for the spike. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do that on a spare piece of wood here. So um, we have our piece of uh, 40 by 40 oak. And what we want to do is we want to put a cross through the middle of it so we know it's dead centre. Okay, so we just take our um, pencil and our ruler and just go dead, dead centre straight across. You want it as accurate as possible because the way this this works is each each module bit uh, has a screw that the that the, um, that the spike sits into, which you'll see in a minute. Anyway, I'll show you in a minute. So now these um, these eight mil threads there. This is the type that screw into wood and then you've got a proper thread inside but this is a quite a uh, rough thread there. I can't remember what you call these now. It'll come back to me soon. So in able to uh, fit those in, we need to use a 10 mil drill bit. Now these are a wood set here. And um, the reason these are good is because they have a spike on the end of them and then you can get them dead accurate when you're drilling down. Now. I did use my pillar drill to drill all these, but because obviously um, a lot of you probably don't have a pillar drill, I'm going to just show you how to do it with a normal drill. You can either hold this or you can put in a vise. So um, I'm going to hold it. Now I'm just going to get that spot on on that X there. So I know, and I'm going to put it onto the high speed. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is just wobble this around slightly in here because I find this 10 mil to be just too too small really. So it needs to be slightly bigger because this oak is extremely hard. And what you'll find is you will you'll, you'll struggle to get the thread in. So we're just going to elongate it very just just a tad there. So there we go. The 
that is spot on in the middle now. So the next thing to do is to get our our thread, and this needs to have an Allen key for the centre. I'm not entirely sure of the of the size of this Allen key. Um, let's have a see if it's got it on here. Oh yeah, it's a well yeah, it's an eight mil, <coughs> an eight mil Allen key. So what happens is is that pops into there, you see, and then we have to start this off. Now if you can see. I've got a plaster on my finger there. Well, I did so many of them yesterday, I've got a blister come up. So, but so what you've got to do is you've got to push that down and you've got to try to keep it dead level, really. Because there we go. Now, I've got a vice here which I'm going to put it in in a minute. So, as you get down further, you need to get it in a vice. You see, now that's going in fairly straight. So now if it wasn't going in straight, it'd go in at an angle and then it'd be difficult for the spike to sit on the, the, the screw that, that I use. So, just going to carry on going down there further. So you can see if the screw, what tends to happen, if the hole's too, too uh, not wide enough, you get a crack in this because this gets very difficult to screw in and as it gets tighter, it tends to crack. So I had a couple of them that cracked, which are fine. It's still, it's still got the thread in there. And it works, works fine. So there we go. So I'm going to stick it in the vise now, just to finish it off, because uh, it starts to get <coughs> very difficult otherwise to hold it. Okay. See, now that one's snapped as well. Now that's what I say. You've got to get the hole. Slightly bigger, so you really could do with uh, a 12 mil drill bit or an 11 mil. So anyway, I got all my ones in fine there. So they all went in. Most of them went in fine. I had a couple that cracked, but all of these ones all went in spot on. There you go. There was one that that, that cracked very slightly just there, but it, it, it's 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 nothing. So anyway, so what happens is then is once you've got that in there, your 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 spike then screws in it's very self-explanatory it's very easy so <coughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to start we're going to crack on with this now so um what i need to do now is i need to swap over the drill bit okay, so we're going to be using this size drill bit now which is a five mil because we're using these screws and when i said about the the spike sitting into a screw so this is what's going to be holding one of these under there with glue as well so that's what happens when you get your other shelf sitting on top so it can't move it's with the weight of it I hold in to the screw there okay so let's crack on and I'll show you how to get this part done <clears throat> so we're going to offer the, the piece of uh, oak up, okay, we're just going to hold it there like that and just mark it lightly, So you want to get this you want to get this dead dead perfect this part because um, as I say it's got to sit into that screw so there we go we've got a, a, a very good cross there so now what I did is I, I did though I drilled these with the pillar drill um, just to make sure that they go dead straight but as I say you won't have one probably you may well if you've got one you've got one it'd be great you can just drill it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this <coughs> with this drill. Some of these uh, DIY drills have a little bubble on there. If you've got one of those, that's even better because then you know you can get it fairly level. Um, but this needs to go dead straight. So I've, I've located that smack on the cross there. So this is the bit where you don't know whether you're going straight down or going at an angle, you see. But this should be fine.
So there you go, I've come through the other side there. So now what I'm going to be doing now is um, I'm going to put this underneath there. Now this is this gets a bit more complicated now, but it's it's not it's not difficult. This is very easy to do. And then I'm going to make sure the sides are all lined up there perfectly with the edge of the ply, because you don't want it to go over or under too much. And then I'm going to put the drill in through there. There we go, so now I've got that. So now you can see that that, that hole that I drilled had gone off because that, that hole there is not centred. That's why it's good to use a pillar drill. Anyway, this will be fine this way, but I, so I'm just going to drill that through. Now, what we need to do now, we need to get our screw. And we're going to put our screw in there. Right, okay, and then we're going to put the, uh, the block of wood underneath there. And this is a dry run before we put any glue on it. There we go. See that sticks over very slightly there. Okay, it's only it's only a tad. That's, this is why you really need to use a pillar drill to do it. <clears throat> anyway, this will be fine. I'll show you what I'll do. So, get that down there. Now we need some wood glue. Let's just go a bit close to this and let's just push something down the end of that. That's it. So we're just going to put a bit of glue on there, not much, just a tad. Spread it about a little bit. It'll all just ooze out the sides after a while. Right, so now we're going to put that back under there. Okay. There we go. So that's one of our corner blocks on. So you get the gist of how it goes. And, and when you uh, when you get your shelf from your other, I mean this is our top one, it doesn't matter with this one, but that is, that is what happens with the spike, it sits in there. So as you can see, we've got screws there that go into this piece and then the, the other spike sits on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is just go around and finish this off the other four corners, the other three corners, and I'll be back in a second. Right, okay, I've got the four blocks on there now. So what we've got to do now is just to screw our spikes on the bottom and uh, fingers crossed it will fit into those screws at the top of, of the, uh, the other shelf there. It's always a bit of a gamble. As long as you've got all your measurements dead spot on, you should be fine. Now, I never had a problem with the other ones. They all went in perfectly. You can adjust the screw on there a little bit if you needed to. If you're out slightly, just unscrew it in and sort of try to move it over very slightly. It would only be fractional even if it was out, but it, shouldn't, it should all be totally spot on. So. Now the reason why I'm using four, four spikes instead of three, so it, it, three would be two of these oak pieces on the front and then one in the middle, is because this is going to take a hell of a lot of weight and four spikes are better for taking a lot of weight than three really, so that's why I've, uh, I've opted for this. Right, so let's go and offer this up over here. You've got to be very careful with these spikes because they're extremely dangerous. Fingers crossed it's going to work. That's in there. Oh, look at that. This is the bit that's going to be the tester. Yes, spot on. There we go. That is our three-part rack built. 
So all I'm going to do now is just to show you how to fit the isolation tables to these. And um, we're going to screw the casters on the bottom and then we're going to just show you it on the bench there all in its glory. So, Right, so I've put the isolation table on top. Okay. And um, you can either bring it to the front, but what I want to do is I want to centralise it in the centre. So I've got the weight distributed perfectly all over. I don't really want to put the piece of equipment on here and it to be too far forward or too far back. I want to try to keep the weight dispersed equally into the centre. So I've already marked this out, I've already measured this out. So there's, there's a gap of 70 mil either side here and then 60 mil back to front. Now the size of this rack that I've built here is 600 wide, okay, by 500 deep. Now you can make it whatever size you like, but this is just my preference. So now I've got that in place, what I want to do is I just want to take my pencil and just do a very faint line around there. I don't want to dig into the uh, into the birch ply too much because I'm going to give this a final sand and the the um, the pencil marks will come off. So I'm just going to do that there. Okay, and we're going to take that off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to screw some spikes on the underneath of this now. Okay, and then we're going to put it back on there. And then we're going to turn it the right way up so the spikes are on the underneath. And then we're going to lower it down so it's perfectly in line with those marks that I've uh, put on there. <coughs> Sometimes these are a bit temperamental at first, there we go. Right, so that's as far as that goes down there. So you can adjust these up and down to what you want. You, for this job, what I'm about to do now, I need to get them about the same height, really. And the beauty of these is you can, if you if you did swap out some equipment, and you uh, and the new equipment was slightly taller, you'd be able to pull the spike up. So it give you a bit more headroom there. I mean, I hope you like well, the way that I've done this video. It's just the fact that that it's uh, it's so time-consuming to film as well for me. And I think most people get the gist of how this works. And it's it's very simple and basic. It's just birch ply cut to size and oak balustrades. It's very easy. <laughs> right <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to try to get this exactly in the place it doesn't matter if it's if it's not totally right but try to get it as neat as, uh, as possible um so that looks like that needs to come over very slightly there uh, that's about right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a square if i can find one in here i'm in a bit of a mess there we go so here's a square here, so I'm going to set this to 70mm for the sides. There we go. Right, that's spot on there. That's pretty good. Because when this goes on, you see, the reason for this is we, we need to put some screws in in a minute so that that is out very slightly <coughs> what the hell that is on top of that right so we need to just move that over very slightly i mean they're, they're, you don't have to be that accurate but 
if you're doing the job you might as well get it right while you're doing it so that's about right so let's just do this one at the back and the front to 60 now because that was the, the the gap that we had there right so that for some reason needs to go over slightly there because it, it, it's it's the front that needs to look the, the part really because you only really see the front right that's about right there so now all we're going to do is just press it down you can hear a crunch as the spikes push into the birch ply there we go so we've got a little indentation in the top there now let's put that over there uh, for some reason that's got a little bit of a mark on that now but i should sort that out right so now what we want to do is we want to put some screws in here um so i've got several size screws here um and i think these are the size that i was using so these are slightly too long so what i do is i cut them down on a bolt cutter after so they need to go into there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drill a hole in there so again these are the best drill bits because they've got the little spike on the end of them and I'm going to remembering you don't want to drill too far here so you might want to put a bit of tape on that's one That's two. Make sure you get a spot on there. Three. Four. Right. Now you could put boots on the bottom of these, like spike boots. But while I'm doing this like this, there's no point. I might as well just screw them in put screws in and I'll show you how this works now let's just get this into there now I'm not going to screw this totally right the way through because I've got to cut it down slightly because these are just a bit too long these are 25 mil and they'll pop out the bottom So you might want to put some uh, get some 20 mils but because I've got these anyway all I'm going to do is just chop the chop some of it off on on here there we go and then I can screw that into there right now you might want to countersink these as well so I have a countersink bit which is there which I'm going to use now just because these are these are size 10 screws and the head's quite big so it doesn't tend to bury that easy so I'm just gonna let's try that right, okay a little bit more still because I'm going to polish this so I want them to be nice and uh, sunk that's better there we go right i'm going to carry on with this and i'll be back in a second right so i've got the screws in here at the top now okay my cameraman is coming over right okay so the screws are in the top so let's just offer the isolation table up now to it and see whether it fits so the reason we put the screws in is so it, it locks it in place look at that you don't want to put spikes on bare wood it will just be scratching all over the place so um so that's that so that's looking really smart so what will happen now is our other shelf here now 
will go on. This one's all got to be sanded up. Well, it's all going to be sanded up again before polishing. Um, it's going in there. It's going in there. See, that's what happens there. And then your your piece of equipment will sit inside that. And that's going to be it. So you, you're going to have maximum isolation here. So you, you, you're isolating the shelf from the other shelf and the, the isolation table from the shelf. So it's giving you double protection to stop any vibration getting up into your equipment. Right, let's just fit the uh, the um, the casters on the bottom now. So these are our casters. Extremely heavy duty, solid firm rubber will on the bottom of that. It's like a hardened rubber. Um, and it's got a locking mechanism on there as well. Because once I get it in place, I want to be able to lock it. Because there's nothing worse than it keep moving about all the time. So let's uh, flip this over. So we know this is the back of our of our piece. So we want the locking casters on the front there. So we're going to offer those these casters up now. Right, we'll set them back a, a little bit. We're going to just set them back a little bit because we don't want them to uh, protrude out too much out the front. So I need to find my pencil. Here we go. Right, so there we go. We'll get it about there. It's about right. So we're just going to mark those. So I'll show you how to do one of these. It's pretty easy. Just a matter of uh, drilling a hole. That's me other drill gone. That's me other drill. And there should be a drill bit about somewhere as well. Right. Right, so we've got a self tappers here, self tapping screws to fit these casters on with. So we're just gonna put them on that drill. We're going to just screw our self tappers down, start them off on each one. You could do a pilot hole, but these go straight in, so they work really well. So, then we want to put our um, caster in place and just start screwing the screws straight in and down. That's one there. Making sure it's all nice and in the right place still. There we go. Bearing in mind, as I say, this has got a lot of weight on this. So this is why it needs, uh, needs really strong, strong casters. Obviously, if you was putting spikes on it, it wouldn't matter. But uh, as I'm not doing that, there we go. Put that down in there. There we go. One caster fitted really nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit the rest of these casters on, and I'll be back in a second. So here we have our four casters on the base of our rack. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to assemble it all and show you it. Um, I've only obviously just put on one uh, isolation table at the moment so I've got to add another one on. So I'll show you it with that on as well. So here we have our equipment rack nearly complete so I've got to make another isolation table for the bottom rack there and on the top my turntable is going to sit with my already isolation table which I have for my turntable which you've uh, if you're new to the channel you check out one of my videos on there on uh, how to make the ultimate turntable isolation stand <clears throat> so as you can see this is going to be now disassembled 
fully sanded and uh, then I'm going to polish it the same color as this in a like a a cherry teak color so now this is extremely rigid now this goes nowhere it really is strong so once all the equipment sits on it it's going to be very nice and uh, it's going to give it a very stable sitting for the um, for the equipment to uh, rest on so um, I know this video isn't a full making video like I'd like it to be but it's just so time consuming that I just haven't got the time to do it on a video so but as you can see it's self-explanatory so all I've got to say now is thanks for watching another Tweak Command video if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe don't forget to give this video a like and uh, thanks for watching but one last thing, I shall do another video once it's polished and show you it all. Thanks for watching.